Fleet 11 to 10 and Nations Pride 11 to 8, dominating the market here. Once again, commentary comes from Alistair Cohen. And away they go. Not a bad beginning with Desert Fire, one of the first to show. They're all swinging on, waiting for some sort of pace. And Ionian, a reluctant leader, Ursa Minor, hard held at the outside. Nations Pride gets into the mix. Desert Fire broke out well, takes a seat just in behind. Deramethos and Zagray are together with Ottoman Fleet just behind midfield. And the race not really being run to suit him. Then comes Good Fortune and the lights of Blue, Withering and Freescape are together. And they race only about five to six lengths off the leader with Midlife Crisis alongside that group. Finally, Anavil, who races no more than eight lengths off the leader they finally sort themselves out into an order and Aeonian is in front but probably not by design withering on the wide outside has an opportunity to hasten things up but he's been forced to work hard desert fire against the inside rail will end up getting up into the leaders as well then comes Ursa Minor the white sleeves and Cap Nations Pride sets just off them I'll be surprised if the course record is under threat here then comes Ottoman Fleet against the inside two lengths off the leader Durant Amethos at the outside of Zagray. Zagray's one off the fence. Withering stuck in no man's land. Then comes Midlife Crisis. Good Fortune was further back. Then a length away to Freescape. And Anavil sees them all through the final 700 meters. Aeonian and Desert Fire are head for head towards the top of the straight. Nations Pride gets up, gets into the open, and now swings for home in third. Then comes Ottoman Fleet. The blue jacket and white cap goes well enough. Zagray, the yellow cap, is only three lengths off the leader. Deramethos and Ursa Minor were next, but Nations Pride tightens up. Ottoman Fleet, though, going to match him every inch of the way. Then comes the Grey. They followed by Desert Fire, who's empty, and the Yonia, but Nations Pride. This is where class has a lot to do with performance, and Nations Pride runs away from Ottoman Fleet and the Grey. Nations Pride top win. The Grey ran second. Third goes the way of Ottoman Fleet. Then came Deramethos, Anavil, Aeonian, Good Fortune, Freescape. Then came Midlife Crisis, Desert Fire, Withering in Ursa Minor. Good win there for Nations Pride. Gives Charlie Appleby a sixth straight win in the Dubai Millennium Stakes. That's quite something, isn't it? 11 to 8 for Godolphin. Second was Zagray. 11 to 2. And third was Ottoman Fleet, the 11 to 10 favourite. Rishi Passad caught up with the trainer enjoying such a fine run in this contest. Well, delighted to be joined once again by Charlie Appleby after a beautiful performance on his return from Nations Pride. Charlie, just get your reaction. I mean, I don't think you could be any happier with what he did today, could you? No, that's right. Um, you know, he didn't go a great gallop, as we saw. When, and William said he was just a little bit tardy from the gate. But the last thing he wanted to do is sort of set him a light there to go and sort of go and get on, get on with it. And so, uh, you know, he, he took his medicine and sat where he was. But... Um, you know, as we said there before the race, the class was hopefully always going to prevail. And um, you know, once they turned in, and it was, and they started to try and get through the gears. Most of them there were sort of suffering slightly, but you know, one horse who showed his true colours and class there was was Nation's Pride. Jebel Hatter, Dubai Turf. How do you see it from here? Look, we let the dust settle, and, and obviously we've got Super Saturday to get through as well. We've got Rebels Romance to hopefully uh, make his appearance there uh, in the uh, City of Gold, hopefully there to sort of give him his little prep run towards uh, the Shima Classic. Um, and then we've got, you know, hopefully two or three runners in the uh, Jebel Hatter there in Master of Seas and Valiant Prince. And to be fair, Ottoman, you know, <laughs> Ottoman Fleet will probably go again there. Uh, probably might have had a bit of headgear to him. Uh, so in doing so, we'll probably leave this horse and go straight into World Cup night and sort of sit on the fence probably until, you know, after Super Saturday, Super Saturday should I say, and uh, see, uh, see how the sort of the cards uh, fall from there. But... You know, immediately you, you sort of say, have a crack at the, you know, the Dubai turf there. You know, they're going to go a strong gallop over the nine there, and that should suit him because, like I say, he has got he's got the class and he's got the gears to go through it. He's exciting. Can't wait to see what he does this season overall. Um, I was chatting to William Buick after he obviously wrote his third win of the evening and talking about having his mum here. Obviously, you've got your family here. I mean, it must be a lovely feeling to have another good night here, but also to, to share it for once at the carnival this week with all of that. No, for sure. It's, it's, uh, look, it's, the carnival, as we know, is coming towards the end. And the yeah, half turn came at the right time for the, the family to come out. And obviously, William's mum's been out helping babysit, I think, by the sounds of it. But, uh, yeah, it's, look, it's, it's great to be here. It's been a great carnival again. Uh, the crowd's been fantastic, as always. Uh, but, uh, yeah, to see some of the youngsters, uh, 
they say that's the future hopefully well i have to say the appleby children are my favorite children ever to come to maidan because not only have they been brilliant doing the presentation even doing face at the races but they've also kindly given me one of their boxes of chocolates as well in fairness they've already scoffed too so i'm glad to pick up this one so thank you very much to erin edith emily and sean appleby you are my favorite applebees <laughs> Delectable treats in that box, I'm sure. Thanks very much to Rishi and to Charlie Appleby there as well. That's it from me in the studio. The Friday Club is coming very shortly. Alex Stephen and Martin Dwyer on the sofa for fun and frolics, no doubt. In the meantime, though, I leave you with Gordon Brown and Martin Dixon with their take on the afternoon's action at Kelso. <laughs>